Okay, so let's look at the live group node and see how it behaves and the properties that we have available to us. For this example, I'm just going to grab any nodes. It really doesn't matter for this. What we want to do is just see the fundamentals of the live group and how we work with it. So I'm going to select these and make a live group from there. Now, very similar to a group. Now, all those nodes that we've selected are, sim are represented by a single node. Uh, the difference is we have this icon and a couple of other things that we'll talk about. Uh, we have the ability to look at what's inside of it through a separate node graph, just like you do with a regular group. Um, and of course, if you lose that tab, you can always get it back by using the show edit button. Let me just park this to the side and then look at our original node graph here. So all those nodes that we selected, the blur, the color correct, and the grade are now uh, visible here, except there's a couple of other things. We have the live input node, and then we have an output node. The live input node represents everything that is being plugged into our live group upstream. The output node uh, represents which part of our live group node graph is going to be the last node in the chain and then continue out of the live group and continue downstream. So in this case, it's the gray node that is the last one being plugged into the output node, and that is what's coming out of the live group. If I was to change this to the uh, blur node, well, now the blur node is the one that's coming out uh, of the live group. So let me just undo that. And just keep an eye on this icon uh, for a second, uh, because that is going to be changing over the next few minutes, and I'll explain what each one of those icon states mean, and then we'll go through it again uh, one more time. So now let's look at the properties. We have very similar right now, up uh, just like we do have uh, for a group, except when we get to the properties. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna float the properties panel right here. And what we have available to us is a couple of things and then we have others that are grayed out. So what we have available is the publish button. Uh, we have under our file here, we can browse and load in a live group. We can reload our live group at any time. We can also open our live group in a separate session. So I'm going to go ahead and start the publishing of this. Now, it's a little early to publish. We haven't really done anything inside of here, but that's okay. We could be publishing now. Uh, we can publishing later, but let's really we want to take a look at what this does. So let's go ahead and publish. And it is important to understand what we're doing uh, when we're actually publishing. So when we publish, we're, we're taking the current state of our live group and all the nodes and their property states, and we are writing them to disk at a file location. Uh, to an NK script. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take all those nodes. I'm going to write them out as a live group onto disk as a .NK script. And I'm going to say OK. So it's also very important to understand that publishing doesn't add the contents of our live group to this current script. Instead, what it's doing is it's reading all of these nodes uh, that are inside of the live group from an external script. So they're not a part of our script until we tell them to, and we can tell it to by making them editable, which we'll look at in a second. So right now, uh, we'll see the icon changed. It is now grayed out, and the gray represents that we are reading this live group uh, as its state on disk, exactly how it was written out inside of our script. So we can see that we're reading this in, we have it gray. So when we are reading this off of disk, something else changes with inside of our live group is now locked. It's represented with that little lock icon. So that means I can't do anything inside of here. I could uh, try and delete this node. It's not going to happen. I could even try and move these nodes. I can't do that either. I can try and build a node. It's not going to let me. The only thing I can do is actually create a viewer because the viewer is non-destructive. And with the viewer, I could plug that in somewhere else. And that's not changing anything inside of the live group. I'm still reading it as it was written off of disk into my current script. Let's just go ahead and delete that for a second. Now, uh, if I wanted to do something inside of here, I would have to make this live group editable. So let me just go ahead and reload this for a second. So we know that we are in this gray icon. If I make editable, we now see that we are in a yellow icon. So the yellow icon means I've now, these are no longer uh, off of disk. Now it's a part of my script and I can do something with them. Now what I want to do next is I'm going to add a write node because we, the next property we have here is this render. And this pretty much does what you expect it to do, but let's just go ahead and look through the example. So as soon as I do something inside of this live group, if I even move a node, let's keep an eye on this icon, we now have an asterisk beside it. That means that I've changed something inside of this live group. And very important, if I want these changes to stick, well, it means I need to republish this live group onto disk either over itself, a new version, or however uh, you intend to use it. So let's go ahead and make a write node. I'm just going to give it a file path here. I'll just call this something like this. Okay, 
So now I've added a write note to it. I want these changes to stick. I'm gonna go ahead and publish it. I'm just gonna publish it on top of itself for a moment. And I'll reload this. And now you can see we have uh, additional option available because I've added the write note. We have the ability to render. So just like you expect, if we have a write note inside of here, we can render that write note out. Other options are similar ones you'd find uh, on the write node. They're just exposed inside of our live group. So that means that we can read the file for output. So instead of calculating all the nodes that are leading up to that write node, we can take that output and just use that and read on from there. And we can choose how we deal with missing frames, just like we can with read or write nodes uh, inside of Nuke. Now in the advanced section, we have the ability to uh, enable an output node override. So what that means is that we can, I'm gonna make this editable so I can clearly uh, illustrate what's happening here. So I'm gonna make editable, we'll see the icon change first to the yellow, then I'm gonna make a change inside of here and we'll see that if we want these changes to stick, I'll get the asterisk and I'm gonna need to republish that. Okay, so what I'll do is I will override the output node uh, via the properties of the live group. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and grab the name of this color corrector and I'm gonna paste it in here. So I'm gonna enable, I'm gonna paste. Before I hit enter, let's just keep an eye out on where this output is plugged in. So over there, I'll select it and now we can see that it's jumped over to the color corrector. If I was to grab the grade node and do that instead, it'll jump back and the grade will be the output. So this section obviously can give us a, a advanced option to override what the output node is, but we need to be in an editable state for that to work. Otherwise the entire live group is locked down. If I disable this, you'll see it'll jump back to the right node. And then if I reload this, we'll see everything straighten out and go to our original live group off of disk like that. So that uh, it covers the properties of the live group and what we have available to us. We have this node section just like we do with every other node inside of Nuke. Uh, the live group does have the ability to copy the nodes uh, to a group. Uh, other than that, we have the postage stamp hiding and we have the ability to label, change our fonts, etc. Uh, but from there, let's just go over these icons one last time uh, just to make sure that they're clear. So when we create, we have a live group that we're reading off of disk, we have the grade icon. If we make it editable, we brought those nodes into our script and now we are using them inside of our script. If we change anything within our live group, we get the asterisk letting us know, hey, you've changed something. And if you want these changes to stick, you need to republish. Now there is one more icon state and we're gonna take a look at that in the next section here when we create a custom tool uh, out of a live group.